What's going on guys, GeoSnow right here, so in today's video we're going to see some hidden features in the iOS 11 beta 1 that Apple didn't tell you about. So uh, let's get straight into that, I'm going to also briefly touch on the smart inverted colors which is some kind of dark mode in the iOS 11 but nowhere near Noctis or any other um, dark mode tweak from iOS 10. Anyways, I'm going to start with the Safari because it really got some improvements. As you can see, the address bar got a little bit improved and if I try to refresh, you can see the progress bar is now a part of it. It's um, it's embedded inside the progress bar, sorry, inside the address bar, it's no longer separate. And the scrolling got a huge improvement. Check this out. It's now smooth, it's now going uh, smoothly, no more chunky, no more stickiness. As you can see, it used to be something like this, you had to do it by chunks. Now you can simply do that, and that, and you're on. So good work, Apple. As you can see, the battery has also been improved. Although uh, some people are, um, are very interested in the in the bars up there, which are uh, which are now uh, one, two, three, four. Are four instead of five? Well, that's okay. Anyways, the battery also got a little bit uh, improved. As you can see, the outline, the um, the border of the uh, of the battery is now much more bold, and you can you can see it better. So it it really did got improved. Let's move swiftly on to another application, and that is the notes application. It got some improvements and. Uh, for some reason, this notes um, labeling here it's too big. But anyways, moving on, you can create a couple uh, a couple notes in here as you you're probably uh, already used to, and you can select multiple backgrounds or multiple um, kind of shades. But you can also create um, the uh, the tables, which I didn't remember being in here. Also, you have all this add sketch, take photos, scan documents. Anyways that uh, used to be in here and the uh, the ruler and all this stuff remain unchanged. Anyways, if you if you go back in here, as I said, you're now able to create this uh, these tables, which is pretty interesting. Okay, moving swiftly on, I'm going to go ahead to the uh, settings page, which now include, of course, this big uh, bold settings label in there. You have the suggestions in here, which tell, tell you to set up Apple ID or to set up passcode and so on. And then you have, of course, the um, the general settings. And if you go ahead in here, you no longer have that storage thing. It's now personalized for your device. In my case, it says iPod Touch storage. In your case, probably it says iPhone storage or iPad storage. And it now shows the um, this little graphical uh, representation of your uh, your storage. And it also gives a recommendation. For example, offload unused apps. Automatically offload unused apps when you're low on storage. Your documents and data will be saved. So if you do that, it's going to probably remove or um, yeah, remove applications you do not use. Also, it breaks down everything in here by um, by their usage. And if you scroll up in here, sorry, down in here, you have the system and how much it takes on your device, the system itself without your personal data. So pretty neat little features in here. If you scroll a little bit uh, more, you're going to see a shut down button that didn't used to be in here. Now, a lot of people do not know why the hell we have that. And if you press it, it goes directly into this slide to power off and the reason you have that is for for those of you who have a broken power button and um, and simply cannot power off the device you can power it on by connecting it to a um, a uh, power cable is going to power on automatically but what if you want to shut it down well now you can do that by simply uh, opening this slider in here automatically and doing this so pretty neat little feature attention to details that is good the VPN icon I do not have a VPN set up for the moment but the VPN icon was also fiddled with a little bit it's now uh, no longer a square one it is round corner it's definitely something uh, small but important when it comes to, to new features. Going to accessibility in here, you also have some uh, some important things that are for Siri at first. When you go ahead in here on Siri, you have type to Siri. And um, when you enable this, you can now communicate with Siri by typing and not by speaking. Let me, let me demonstrate that. Okay, as you can see, I can uh, type something to, uh, to Siri. Okay, and it's definitely going to, it's going to, of course, do that. So uh, you can do that pretty neat little feature again. All right, so let's move on. We have the files application that is now able to uh, use drag and drop and at the same time is able to finally play FLAC. 
audio files on it. So it's definitely interesting. You have the Photos application, which uh, got a little bit revamped. You can now uh, play GIFs inside it, which is interesting. And the filters when uh, when you do photo editing have uh, have the name ch the names changed. But also the camera application. If you go ahead in here, if the grid is activated and the device is staying on a flat surface and you're trying to uh, to get it to lift it off a little bit, you can see it has that uh, that try that uh, thing that levels off for some reason. I do not know how you can use that feature, but anyways, it's cool. Now the calculator probably already know it has been changed completely. And um, if you if you actually uh, put the, the device in landscape, I'm always going to change, but I'm not going to do so because it cuts off the recording. Then moving swiftly on to uh, to other things is of course the notifications part. The notifications are no longer uh, looking like the iOS 10, you probably have already seen, but you can no longer uh, swipe left or right in order to dismiss the notification. Pressing on it is going to bring you to the application that generates it, but if you hold on it like this, it's going to show you the uh, the content of it. And if you try to drag a little bit, you have that dismiss button. Pretty interesting. Now the notifications are, par are part of the uh, lock screen. So they're no longer separate, as you can see from here. You can still access your um, your things in here though, your widgets. Anyways, let's see a little bit the um, this thing. Now you can see you have the uh, the toggles for the uh, the sliders for the light and for the uh, audio, which probably hints the fact that the iPhone 8 is not going to have any audio rockers. I don't know. Anyways, you also have something if you 3D touch or hold the uh, flashlight, you can change the intensity, but for some reason it doesn't show up on my device. I have seen it on other um, on other devices. It's a, a exactly something like this one. Let me try to show you. It's something like this, but uh, with a couple of spaces, but it's not showing up due to a bug on my device for some reason, so I cannot show you that. Speaking about other things in here, you can no longer have both Bluetooth and airplane mode activated at the same time. You can you can have the Wi-Fi and the airplane mode activated though, which is okay. Now uh, moving on, okay. You can see uh, something interesting in the iOS 11 is the fact that I can take up one application. Sorry, okay. And if I want to move it, I can move it individually, or I can take more applications by uh, pressing on them. For example, let me try to, to take the iPhone in one hand, okay? If I want to move more applications at the same time, now I have four applications. And you can see it has some interesting effect in here. Uh, it has a stickiness to it. And if I want to move it to, a, to the next page, pretty easy. I move, uh, I move four applications at the same time or even more. So it's definitely easier to make your, um, your, custom, well, your, your custom home screen. Easier to make, easier to drag and drop. Okay, so now let's see what is that dark mode from the uh, from the iOS 11. But in order in order to show you that, I have to uh, to record the screen with a camera because that is an effect of the LCD itself. It's not being shown in a recording. So let's get on that. Okay, so uh, the famous uh, inverted colors or smart inver inverted colors, aka the dark mode from iOS 11, looks something like this. Uh, yeah, um, it it has that blue dock for some reason in there. By the way, I have activated uh, this thing by triple pressing on my home button and in order to do that, I went ahead in here on accessibility shortcut and selected smart invert colors so that I can activate this. And uh, yeah, it, I, I think you can call this a uh, smart inverted colors. As you can see, uh, by default, it makes the icons inverted as well, but then it realizes it's the, uh, it's the other way out and it generates normal icons. I guess this is some kind of dark mode, but it's definitely nowhere what we expected. Yeah, it does make all these pages um, dark, I guess. Let's go ahead somewhere where we have icons. Yeah, you can see the icons remain um, colored. And um, this means that we do have a little bit of intelligence in here. So they, they're probably going to, to make it a little bit better. But yeah, it's, it, it's definitely looking like inverted colors. I mean... Yeah, and it's acting pretty uh, non-responsive if you if you have um, already spotted on. As you can see, I'm going to go back in here into the uh, general and uh, accessibility, and let me try to find that shortcut thing. And I'm going to make it to to do the normal classic inverted colors to show you the difference. So um, uh, classic inverted colors looked like this, so it's definitely an improvement. Now the uh, the normal ones are looking something like this. 
So yeah, pretty pretty interesting. We'll go on then. So yeah, this is pretty much their uh, dark mode of the iOS 11 dark mode. Anyways, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Till the next time, I'm Geo Snow. Peace.